Our next speaker is Mr. Martin Dunley, who is the Senior Director, Business of uh, Utilities at Oracle. Please give him a very warm welcome. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, everybody. You can hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, many thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to address you this morning. Um, um, as you heard in the introduction, I work for uh, Oracle's Utilities Industry Business Unit, where I am the, uh, the lead for that uh, industry. Um, it's hard to follow up uh, an exciting conversation around uh, satellites with a discussion on big data analytics and opportunities, but I'll, I'll give it my best shot anyway. Um, I'd like to start um, by perhaps posing the question, uh, why organizations and why utilities in general ought to be even considering or care about data and big data challenges? Um, and I guess there's two reasons I would, I would suggest to you that perhaps they, uh, they should be looking at this. The first is utilities, like all other organizations, have a need to process the data, whether that's big or small data, uh, whether it's modeled or model-less. And the second, which is becoming increasingly more uh, common, particularly in the era, era of, a, of a smart energy and, uh, and smart grid environments, is the need for utilities to be able to find out more and more information hidden inside in the data, what we're referring to as smart or deep analytics. And these are two of the areas uh, I, will, uh, I will cover in this morning's presentation. Uh, why utilities ought to be caring about big data, the value of analytics as, a, as an advantage, a competitive advantage. And then I'll finish, um, like many of the speakers have already referenced this morning, by looking at, at how the proliferation of smart devices and M2M as a contributor to uh, big data and big data challenges needs all, need, also needs to be taken into account. <clears throat> so when we traditionally talk about big data, we instinctively think about smart grid. When people think about smart grid, they instinctively think about the large amounts of data and the challenges that's going to, uh, to uh, gener uh, uh, present to utilities. And so this is a, a fairly common image that utilities and pres presenters often use in terms of looking at the individual components and challenges that organizations will face in the, uh, will, will, uh, will have to deal with in the face of uh, smart grid deployments. So we know from, from diagrams like this that the tr traditional energy value chain is changing dramatically for utilities. And as I said, changing business models, large numbers of smart devices and smart meters that are being deployed, uh, changes that are taking place, not just at the, at the customer interface, but at the in the distribution network, are creating not just business and process challenges, but this tsunami of data that utilities need to be able to, to look at. <coughs> <clears throat> but it's not just at the smart level and across the distribution and the interface with the, with the re retail users that we see these challenges. It's also in terms of the sensing and uh, transactive data growth for utilities. And we're seeing a major growth in the utility space. And you can say the, some of the reasons that's taking place, place is because of a proliferation of devices, basic, enhanced and advanced. So in the case of the enhanced, we're looking at comprehensive in-home displays, programmable communicating thermostats, and right up through the advanced, where you're looking at fully automated intelligent energy management systems, uh, program appliances, et cetera, et cetera, EVs, and, uh, and the, the need for uh, integrated uh, charging and distribution networks to support those. So again, there's nothing new here. We know that these are changes that are taking place in utilities and in, eco in uh, economies across the world. And they are, as I said, presenting not only business and, uh, and uh, uh, challenges for utilities, but also so, so big data challenges. And we know over the years, as we've been able to track what utilities are going through, that we've seen a significant growth in the amount of data that utilities are managing within their organizations. So I think it's fair to say, and we'll, we'll, we'll refer to this in the, in, the, in the talk many times over the next number of minutes, compared to many uh, of, of the other industries, including financial services and retail, utilities by and large have been managing small amounts of data for many, many, many years. Their business model has remained relatively unchanged over a long period. And you can see that um, as changes around advanced distribution, 
uh, mobile workforce projects come online, the, ad, the introduction of GIS, outage management systems, all of these changes which have taken place across the industry have not only contributed to better performance and operations on the part of the utilities, but it contrib contributed significantly to the amount and complexity of the data that utilities are, 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 are now required to manage. And we can see as, as the automation systems advance in terms from left to right, and as we start to look at AMI deployments, bringing online uh, thermostats, advanced uh, thermostats, and new devices in the home, and the proliferation of smart meters throughout the network, that data tsunami literally goes vertical for utilities. And that's a new challenge for utilities in terms of what was traditionally a SCADA and a customer data management is now becoming something significant. And it's presenting utilities, I would argue, with not only many new use cases, but it's also presenting them with many opportunities. So this slide is entitled Utilities and Big Data Use Cases, but I would argue that when you talk about network capacity planning as an example of a use case, you're also talking about utilities opportunities to proactively approach the management of their distribution networks. Similarly, around customer experience and outage notification, the opportunity for utilities to enhance the overall customer experience. This is one area, I would argue, where utilities are seeing probably the biggest sea change in terms of their traditional business model. Many of the customers that utilities have today are also customers of many multiple service providers. They're bringing the experiences they have from their retail, their financial services, and their communications relationships to the attention of the utilities and placing new demands and expectations on the utilities in terms of the data they have around about their customers being turned around to provide new and improved services for those customers. In relation to the band response, analytics of the meter and event data consumption is providing real opportunities. And so on and so on. Location-based services, retail marketing and product development, uh, the opportunity to look for utilities, again, a new, a new departure for many of them, at social media and targeted marketing campaigns. And I'll talk about social media in a, in a few moments when we take a little deeper dive in of what constitutes big data. And finally, in relation to renewable and distributed energy generation planning, the opportunity for them to take a portfolio planning approach and to manage their future investments. Something I think you'll agree is very important in this country in particular in light of the new regulatory review uh, uh, um, uh, plans that are in place. And then from a market operations point of view, and I won't go through all of these, we can look at the opportunities that big data and big data use cases provide around data exploration, opportunities around real-time decisions and alerts, or data correlation. So, what makes big data? and Why is it big data and not just data? Well, we say it's big when it consists of structured, semi-structured, and unstructured, and I'll come to that in, in a few moments. We say it has a characteristic around very large volumes. It's, you're talking about large data sets in, 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 uh, in challenging, uh, where you have challenging to store, where you have search sharing and visualization analysis uh, 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 challenges to face. And examples include user and machine generated content through social media, web, software logs, cameras, information sensing, mobile devices, aerial sensory technologies, et cetera, et cetera. So many of these are, were not on the radar, I would argue, for utilities in recent years, but are coming on uh, right now. And the other characteristic of big data is we say it has those four Vs which describe the large volumes you need to address, the velocity at which that data is entering and, uh, in, in your organizations, the variety of the data, and finally, the value. And the value we, we will focus on in a few moments in terms of how analytics can help organizations, not just utilities, to look at how they can derive new value and opportunities out of that data. So we heard in our uh, uh, the characteristics of it that it consists of structured and unstructured. 
I would argue that utilities have done a remarkable job over many years managing the left-hand side of this chart. The structured data, the SCADA data, the operational data that they need to manage, even the small amounts of customer data that utilities have had to manage and look after on behalf of their customers for many, many years. But it's the semi-structured and unstructured data from sources like social media, log, devices, sensors, etc., etc., new feeds that the utilities now have to merge with the old data and manage in new ways. And this is what constitutes the challenge predominantly around big data. So for organizations, we could say there are principally three challenges, and this is also the case for utilities. It's about tapping in to an increasingly larger number of diverse data sets. As we've mentioned these social networks. Now, utilities are looking at weather forecasts, not just in terms of the uh, better performance of their distribution networks, uh, but also in terms of uh, uh, proactive management of their relationships with their customers, uh, uh, notification of potential outages, etc. It's about finding and monetizing the unknown relationship inside your data. And ultimately, it's about allowing the organizations to drive new business opportunities and decisions. And invariably, that's uh, also supported around visualization. So you may have heard in the past, I've certainly heard from speaking with some of our clients around the world, that when we talk about the big data opportunities, and particularly as it replies to smart grid, we often refer to integration, analytics, and visualization as the three things that utilities are facing. And I think that's borne out in, in some of the, uh, the uh, uh, opportunities that big data presents to, uh, to utilities. So let's maybe dive into the third of those uh, for a second and just look at the value and the contribution that advanced analytics can give in relation to supporting and driving new opportunities, <clears throat> excuse me, out of big data. So when we look at advanced analytics, business processes are among the few remaining points of differentiation for companies. And analytics allows you to drive value out of those processes. Statistical analysis, for example, in companies is now being managed at the enterprise level and not at the departmental level because organizations realize the real value that can come out of the data. And the opportunity to be able to build strong service markets is a far more uh, advantageous outcome than I think going out and buying solutions. So recognizing the opportunities and the, the advantage from within the organization and building those solutions. I like this slide because from a utilities perspective, it allows us to look at some of the opportunities to become strategic and drive mission critical uh, decisions within your organization as you deploy or employ uh, advanced analytics. So in the relation to supply, for example, we're looking at, um, uh, I, I apologize, I can't read that from here, uh, but you'll see the, the, the description uh, in, in the middle and some examples of, of companies that, uh, that uh, are deploying uh, analytics to support supply chain, to support pricing decisions, to support human capital decisions, to support product and services qualities, financial performance, and, uh, and research and development. Now, not all of these apply to the utilities, but many of them are starting to come onto the utilities radar in terms of, uh, of, 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 of analytics. And it's also uh, changing the expectation and the evolution of what those analytics can do within organizations. So there's a trend in organizations, for example, to move up this, this value chain in the use of analytics. It also provides utilities greater value from the data, from their data warehouse, and for, from their uh, uh, analytics investments. So initially, we saw um, the use uh, predominantly for historical reporting. Executives, for example, would get published reports showing what had happened, for example, how the company is performing in terms of revenue and profit, or how specific products or, or services are performing. This evolved to providing more ad hoc query tools, uh, providing users with the ability to do some slicing and dicing of the data. You could look at product revenue per region, customer segment, time, etc. Now we see that organizations are wanting to leverage their historical data to forecast the future. For example, 
What should I expect my customer acquisition rates to look like based on past performance? What is my expected network utilization, thereby allowing the utility to make better market spend or network capacity planning decisions? And finally, we're, we're starting to see organizations wanting to do more and more to leverage their data to perform predictive analysis. By leveraging the data mining capabilities, organizations can predict which of their consumers are more likely to churn or what products are they most likely to buy. According to Gartner, about 80% of the analytics or BI investments that companies had been um, uh, investing up until recently were looking at what happened in the past. Now there's a need to focus on what is happening right now and what's going to happen in the near future. <clears throat> it's almost impossible, I think, to have any discussion around uh, big data, big data opportunities and analytics, but are also looking at the impact that the large deployment of sensors, machine-to-machine uh, -machine connectivity, and the Internet of Things is, is, uh, is contributing to in terms of the overall um, uh, big data uh, opportunity. From an Oracle perspective, um, we recently conducted some research with um, Beecham Research in relation to the expectations and the attitudes of a large number of utility organizations across the globe in relation to designing an M2M platform for the connected world and the challenges and opportunities that presents utilities in terms of managing devices at the one end and right through the interfaces to the data center and big data challenges at the back end. Although data storage requirements for M2M solutions are often not huge in the past, this is changing, and very large volumes are expected in the future. What a lot of the utilities told us is, these trends point towards machine-to-machine -to -machine solutions becoming increasingly mission critical, with the need to minimize downtime, which we heard already this morning, and provide high availability solutions. And if we were able to provide the same software development environment for all parts of the machine-to-machine -machine solution, so from the enterprise right down to the smallest devices, then that could be a major advantage, as long as each part, each part could be optimized for its own particular requirements. So in the course of our discussions with, our, with some of our customers, they spoke to us around the need to manage, in a holistic way, security, multi-tiered distribution applications, dynamic platforms, standard, robust, and open solutions to be able to support the large number of devices. And finally, the concept that if it was possible to look at a solution from device to the data center and to have that as a strategy, then it would be, we'd be able to leverage the devices and the engineered systems in the data center either as an on-premise solution or as a cloud. From Oracle's perspective, Java is our solution that we, we, we speak about in relation to this uh, edge to the data center evolution. Uh, so from the enterprise right down to the, 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 the smartest cards or smallest devices, uh, it provides a ubiquitous and common programming uh, environment that can provide full connectivity across the, uh, uh, across the ecosystem. And this is important from a, from a, a big data perspective because it, it allows uh, organizations, regardless of their M2M device strategy, regardless of their network domains, um, to have a fully integrated uh, uh, environment from M2M through devices and to the data center. So in closing, the device is the key component for the M2M evolution. Java, from Oracle's point of view, enables it to be more intelligent, scalable, and supportable. And ultimately, big data is about the data and providing common security, development, and management capabilities across the environment. What can we dis what when we talk about, in closing, when we talk about big data, it's important for utilities, as for any other organization, to understand the challenges that they'll face in relation to data management. 
to look at the products and solutions that will deliver the value to their data and support their needs in terms of driving competitive uh, uh, change the, through their data. And to look at the industry expertise to help you navigate big data opportunities. The technology is available. The challenge for utilities, I think, is to predict the next action. Are utilities and organizations smart enough to discern useful information? Consumer industries have the greatest challenge, but perhaps the, the greatest potential for return. But the trick is finding the value. Usefulness is the key, and for that, big data was formed. Thank you for your time. Thank you, um, Martin. Any questions from Martin? Please raise your hands. There's a gentleman in the middle. Sir, please could you give us your name, company, and job title, and wait for the mic. Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm Peter Mingins. I'm from Esri, UK. Um, we met a long time ago, Martin. Yeah, I, so I, 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 rec I, I recognize the name. Hi, Peter. I do, I do know your background, so you'll forgive the question. You've talked a lot about big data. You've talked a lot about the complexity of big data, the volumes and the quality of it. And from my perspective, utility companies are geographic companies. They have disparate uh, resources, assets spread right across the globe or over large geographies and they need to be managed. And GIS systems have managed those very effectively for many, many years. Um, what we're seeing is uh, a need and a desire to build more insight from big data. Uh, do you see that there is a, a fit in terms of spatial analytics and building insight to support smart grid in the future? And the second question off the back of that is, where do you feel the, uh, the movement is going to be in the UK to embrace really across the enterprise the use of the types of technology you're talking about and the visualizations that could come from it? Okay, so... Um, um I would agree. I think um, GIS has traditionally been um, an excellent tool in terms of managing uh, the spatial orientation, uh, 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 spatial data, and as you say, utilities are, are geographic in nature, and, and it has been an ideal tool uh, from that perspective. Um, certainly in our experience, we are seeing uh, an, uh, uh, an increasing number of situations where we're seeing a convergence between traditional data sets and, and spatially orientated data. Uh, it's, it's, certainly, um, it's certainly one of the plays that uh, the organization I work for um, uh, will, will talk to utilities about in terms of helping them bring the value of the spatial data, which as you know from a utilities point of view, is invariably a standalone solution managed by engineers supporting distribution and, and network operations. So there, there is, I think, a, a huge opportunity within utilities um, you know, retailers have been doing this for many, many years, the value of spatial overlaid onto traditional marketing and, uh, and demographic information. And I think for utilities, they will in time understand the, uh, the value of integrating the, those data sets. Um, if I understood your, your second question in relation to um, um, embracing the technologies uh, uh, in this country or any other country from a utilities point of view, um, I think utilities see... Um, the value that other industries have been able to drive in terms of properly managing um, and exploiting the value within big data. I mentioned a number of them in, in my uh, presentation. Certainly within Oracle, we often share stories uh, across industry boundaries and people like financial services, retail, the communications industries. Uh, they've been doing this for, for many, many years. You know, so when you go in and talk about advances in terms of how you manage big data, performance and scalability challenges, in-memory computations, advanced analytics, they've been managing such large volumes of data for years, I think they get it immediately. They see the value that that drives. And I think that's ultimately where the utilities will go in terms of understanding that both from a customer uh, transformation and an operational excellence point of view, the big data and the analytics tools will ultimately be able to better uh, uh, drive their business performances better. I, I hope that answers the question, Peter. It does, yes. Thank, thank you. I just wanted to thank you, Martin. That was really insightful, and, uh, uh, and I, I thank you for that, uh, that, that pitch. Thank you. Thank you very much. There's one more question in the uh, front, sir. Please could you give us a name and job title as well as company, please? 
Hi there, um, my name's um, Jonathan Aidy and I'm from Cornwall Council and we'll be speaking tomorrow so you'll find out a bit more about um, the programme that I'm working on. Um, I'm, um, I'm developing the Smart Cornwall programme um, within Cornwall and our aim there is to be the UK's first fully integrated smart energy ecosystem and what that really means is that what we're looking to do is to pull all this stuff together in terms of the, um, the DNOs, the energy companies, uh, local stakeholders um, to really understand some of the social, the economic, as well as the technical questions that come out of a smart grid. Um, oh, I've just, just returned from Teju Island in Korea, and one thing they're clearly wrestling with there is big data. They've got loads of data now, but it's how they actually use that to answer some of those questions. Um, so I'm not sure if it's a question, but it, it's more about your talk really excited me about the Cornwall project, because that's something we need to get right from the beginning, I think is if we're going to be delivering on our ambition and all this equipment and technical um, things, how do we actually capture that data so that we can really work on answering those social, those questions about actually how to develop a proper smart grid functioning economic market within Cornwall? So. Well, I, as you said, I think, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I think you've out, outlined in your question, I think, some of the challenges that, uh, that your own organization or any other organization will, will face. I do know, in, um, as, as I was speaking with, with some of my colleagues on, on the panel, which, which comes immediately after this, we were talking about the challenge, you mentioned it in your question, about dealing with very different groups of people. Uh, across this uh, across this increasingly uh, interoperative, interoperative environment, you know, so officials and, and departments in the city, you know, transportation transportation organisations, energy companies, etc. And I think um, that's a challenge. I think a lot of those organisations are out there doing individual projects themselves. Many of them have considerable amounts of overlap. The, the, I think the challenge for people like you, your, yourself and others who are taking on large projects across, uh, across large geographical areas is to try and identify where those overlaps uh, occur and then to come up with some standards and interoperability standards that allow that data to be shared. Then I think the manageability and the real value out of the data is a, is a much easier challenge. Thank you very much, Martin. Any other questions, please raise your hands. Any further questions, please raise your hands. That's it, I suppose. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>